to see this great work. So um, with that, let me introduce uh, David. He's a British photographer and a writer, as I just pointed out his books behind you. Um, he actually has three, uh, three books, uh, all very big sellers um, on street photography. Um, he, uh, his original, he can tell you this himself, but his original work was on elderly and, and uh, care type, uh, uh, well, caretaking. He did a lot of photographs uh, for magazines like that. And um, so he, he, and then he gradually got into uh, street photography and got a master's degree in photography in 2002. Um, and he was one of the original, I think, founding guys of uh, what was in, called in public. Uh, I think it might be the first collective uh, out there. And now um, he's in up photography collective. Uh, with that, I'll let him tell the rest of his story. I'm delighted to see you again, David. He was here last year in real life as our um, as our special guest for the week. So uh, here he is again via Zoom. Welcome, David. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it's great to be part of Street Week again in, in a different way. Uh, and everything you say is true. Uh, uh, it's very difficult for me to present my photographs because I've been taking photographs for a long time. It's getting on for 35 years. So there's a lot of photographs to present and I could go down different ways of doing it. I, I, I kind of consider my photography as a mess. It's sort of, uh, I'm very good at writing about other people's photography talking about other people's photography, but my own photography is not so easy. So my photography is a mess. I, 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 that, I say that with pride because I think that's the way it should be. It's not coherent. And I think you'll see there's a lot going on with my photography, lots of different styles. And I've changed a lot over the years, everything's changed, obviously. And uh, I'm not one of those photographers where I've stayed in one particular place. I'm a kind of a confused photographer trying to move forward. That would be my uh, epitaph. <laughs> so do I, I now, I now click, I now do the share screen, yes? Yes. Right. Okay, that was a weird introduction, but right. Uh, that was a fabulous introduction. Right. <laughs> I have to find, uh, right. I'm, I'm going to start by, I'm, I'm trying to do a kind of a preamble here to try and establish the way I take photographs. And the way I take photographs has changed a lot. 25% uh, of my photographs are out of focus. And I, I want to emphasize this because this is a direction I've gone strongly in. Now this is Krakow in Poland in 2015. And I was in the Jewish quarter and wandering around, not knowing what I was doing. And suddenly a coach load of Orthodox Jews arrived. And I, typically was not sure how to photograph these these Jewish people, these Orthodox Jews. And I start in focus in a very regular kind of way. Uh, but sometimes I go in this direction, which is completely different. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by uniforms, the way people dress. And if a group of people are all the same, I love it. So Orthodox Jews, it could be anything. Uh, so I suddenly flip, my photography flips and I set my camera an eighth of a second and I shake the camera and I take completely different photographs because I think it works better. So this is a constant thing that goes on with my photography in focus, regular, conventional or out of focus. It's a continual theme. And wherever I go, it's the same thing. So this is Hanoi in Vietnam. 
and I wanted to go to Vietnam for a long, long time. And I finally went at the beginning of 2020. I always had this kind of fascination with the a dio dress that the Vietnamese women wore. I, I always thought this would be a wonderful thing to photograph. And I thought that when I got there, it wouldn't be around much. It was a thing of the past, but they were surprisingly everywhere. So this is another typical example of in focus or out of focus. And I'm going for mood and shape. This is a continual kind of tension or decision that I have to make. My, my, I, I mean, I love painting and I think I'm a frustrated painter. And a lot of my photographs are trying to get quickly to painting, to abstract painting. This is a, as I say, I like uniforms. So these uh, Vietnamese soldiers or whatever they were, military, I mean, I just love, I love uniforms. I mean, any, any chance to get a group of people blurred in uniforms is always a good thing for me. Uh, now, I, I don't know if you have this in America, uh, but in London, Europe, we had Extinction Rebellion, which is uh, a group uh, trying to highlight the, the, the problems of climate change. And in London, they dressed up as kind of grim reapers in green and red. And for me, this is an absolute gift. And it has to be out of focus. This is an example where out of focus works better than in focus. So this is a continual decision for me. Uh, I love red, by the way. Uh, I mean, the, 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 I, 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 a lot of photography for me is a gift. And sometimes I wander around and nothing's happening. But sometimes this, this kind of theatre is happening. So I'm always looking for these kind of gifts. And it's blurred, but not too much. You can still, and a lot of these blurred photographs are at an eighth of a second. That's my, my kind of mantra. Now, con complete switch from, this was uh, I, I, in Los Angeles and I was there for 10 days and I didn't really have enough time to really, really engage. Uh, but I got a few good photographs and I, I, I went to North Hollywood and I got there, I, I randomly I went to North Hollywood on the metro thinking I've, I should go somewhere. And I got out and I came out of the metro station. And there's this guy just sort of, I don't know what he was doing. He was just sort of lounging in the sun. And I was completely struck by the color. And I walked past him and I thought, oh, I have to photograph him. And I, I walked back, you know, how close can I get before he notices me? And this is perhaps not a typical photograph of mine, but the colours. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, it's another gift. Uh, I, you know, I mean, th this is the continual thing with my photography. You get these gifts. Uh, so not typical, but I, I love that photograph. And North Hollywood again, the surprising area of uh, Los, I go to Los Angeles and I take the better photographs in North Hollywood, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, and this, this is a kind of, uh, I, I don't know what it was, it was a car park and it had this wire mesh fence around it. And I just love the green. I, I'm very into abstract patterns and mood and it's mysterious. And it, this is my kind of thing. It's a kind of a nothing photograph, but I like it where you can use your imagination with photography. And a more straightforward one, uh, in, in, in Los Angeles, uh, uh, well, what's that area called? The, uh, I can't remember the name, but I mean, it's a starting point with, it's a very uh, kind of uh, put together photograph. 
the, the beginning of the photograph is this this just this uh, uh, graffiti of utopia uh, and just waiting. So you've basically got half the photograph and then waiting for the right kind of person to wander into it. And I, I, I took many, many photographs. Uh, uh, and, th and then this is kind of uh, the one that worked, I think. But in February 2020, the world shut down, uh, including me. Uh, and I returned to, to Kent, where I live. I live in the countryside. And I didn't take, I haven't taken many, taken many photographs after, over the past year. And at some point I decided I really should, you know, try and take some photographs. So in my local area, there's not much to photograph apart from horses. So I call these, this, this series, the lockdown horses. And uh, this, I don't know if you know, people might know that the, the film War Horse, this looks like a war horse to me. Uh, it, it's kind of a horse in a field wearing armor. And this is in focus, but typically I do other kind of, I, I keep this continual in focus, out of focus. This is a kind of a Don Quixote uh, donkey, out of focus. Uh, now, I experiment with photography quite a lot, uh, increasingly, and I'm always trying to sort of break through some sort of barrier. Ah, I experiment quite a lot with photography and I had this crazy idea to try and change things. And I've, I've been going out with my camera with a piece of cellophane which I put in front of the lens to come up with these very kind of abstract, dreamy images, which are really quite weird and experimental. Uh, a lot of my photography is, is trying to escape from reality. Uh, and this is another one where, where the, the, the sunlight is reflecting on the cellophane. Very kind of random, see what happens. So it's not street photography. I mean, I'm I'm described as a street photographer, but I'm really just just a photographer. I think I think really, and you know, completely uh, changing tack, uh, going back. So I'm showing fair photographs taken uh, over the last three or four years, and now I'm going way back. Uh, to the beginning of the 1990s when I was a completely different photographer and probably quite a different person. And this is my beginnings with photography when I was a very conventional black and white photographer. I mean, absolutely rooted in Henri Cartier-Bresson and Elliot Erwitt and all the Magnum photographers. Uh, and this, this is a, a rare photograph in the sense that I half set it up uh, there, were, there were signs around London for a while for some art installation with, with just the sign Y on fences. And I took one of these signs down and just tossed it onto the street to see what would happen. And this, this uh, garbage collector just came along and uh, put it in, in, in his cart. Uh, it's a very strange photograph. Uh, and I, uh, but I, I like to think that he's considering the philo philosophical question of why. And this, this started a series of photographs that I, I uh, undertook called Subtitles for Life. I suddenly got onto this idea where there would be a word in a photograph that would relate and explain the photograph. So this is very much a beginning. It was 1997. And this, this is just a sign outside of a pub uh, near where I used to live in London. And it's to do with Sky Satellite TV. But 
I think it could actually say a lot more that there is no sky today, which is would really be uh, considerably more, you know, disturbing. So no sky today. This one is the beginnings are the words in the background and it's awaiting something to happen, but nothing actually happened. I really wanted some kids to be playing on top of the car to actually be causing a nuisance, but it's just a wonderful sign and nothing happening, but suggesting that something might happen. This, you know, I would never stand, sit behind a, a sign that says lost children, uh, because it's, you know, you're asking for a photographer to come along and take a photograph of you. Uh, I, it was it was for a 75th anniversary of, of VE Day in London from the Second World War. And th this elderly couple was sitting behind this sign, completely oblivious. But for me, it's another gift. Somebody suggested that they'd actually been sitting there for 60 years. And it's quite possible, maybe. And, and this is probably, it's a kind of a closing photograph for, for this series of subtitles for life. Uh, it's taken in Brighton in 1998. And obviously the words are, are the beginning of the photograph, but it desperately needs the right person to walk into it. And it couldn't be a little girl. It had to be an elderly man. And I saw this man wandering down the street very slowly and I wandered into the middle, middle of the road and just took one photograph, which is, which is fairly rare. Uh, but I got him right in the center where he should be. And he actually forms a kind of a D, surprisingly. And normally you would see my reflection in the photograph, but I'm very deliberately hiding behind the post. It probably... Uh, was not his last few days, but it might have been his last few years, quite possibly. This is a kind of a corny, uh, easy photograph to take, but I, I, I have a very, uh, a lot of these early photographs are juxtapositions and kind of funny photographs. Uh, you know, I'm drawn to the humor of Elliot Erwitt and stuff. So th this is another gift, you know, I'm, I'm on a, uh, you know, London underground in East London, and th this guy is just putting up a poster. So I just wait on the platform for the right moment. That's all it is. It's a gift. The, these are just dogs, but they, it might be much more. I love, I love the idea that they might actually uh, be delivering things around London. And, and the dog on the, on the left is, is the driver and the dog on the right is the, the navigator. And uh, th there is no other explanation, you know, it's rarely understood, but dogs actually do drive cars. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced. And a kind of a, a leaning towards abstract. Uh, I like layers. And this is taken through a kind of a wire fence. Uh, and I'm attracted by hats. I, I love hats. And these kind of, they're security men, but they look like Russian sailors. Uh, so it's, it's a very black and white photograph, which is good with a nice contrast. When I, I, I enjoy turning up the contrast in photographs. So it, it kind of really, uh, lives, you know, it comes alive with contrast. And as Julia said at the beginning, I did photograph the elderly a lot when I first started photography. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but in the 1990s, there was a generation of elderly people that maybe subconsciously I, I was aware were disappearing. And in London, I, I, I really wish that I'd known in, in the future that the, the, this generation of women would, I didn't realize that they would disappear. 
in the 1990s, elderly women used to walk around wearing headscarves. Uh, and then suddenly they didn't. And uh, I wish I'd have taken more of this because uh, they were wonderful. And, and this is juxtaposition. It's a very, it's a very background, foreground, old, new, but an, another gift. Now, this is the Queen Mother's funeral in 2002. We've just had the, the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh, which uh, I didn't go to. Uh, but th th this man is, uh, I mean, it's, it's forever a mystery how he manages to stand on the bike. Uh, I, I really don't understand. But he's a particular kind of Englishman. Very, uh, very uh, smart. He's got cufflinks, uh, and I actually, this was published in a book, and I got an email from the man's daughter saying that uh, this was her father and uh, she would like to give this photo to him for on, upon his retirement. Uh, he was a civil servant. So all the people I photograph, I have, very rarely have any knowledge of who they are, but I know this man's name and I know where he lives. And uh, so sometimes that does happen, but it's still a mystery how he manages to stand on the bike. Uh, it, 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 I, I really don't understand. It's, it's a miracle. <laughs> and, and this man as well. Uh, th this is taken in 1996. Uh, I mean, w when I talk about the elderly in the 1990s, it's a kind of a throwback to the 1950s somehow in the way they dress. Uh, this is a very kind of smart man and he's on and off the bus at the same time. I, I, I caught him at the right moment. He, he looks as if he could fall off at any moment. But it's a very London photograph. Uh, because in the 1990s, I, I didn't travel a lot. So I was absolutely a, a London photographer. This is in Edinburgh. Uh, and it's a surprising photograph. It's, it's quite straightforward. But the woman on the right, there's a, a child, the other side of her, hidden. And you can just see the extra set of feet. So it's a, it's a little bit surreal, a little bit surprising. And I love the idea that you have to look twice at the photograph to kind of figure it out because the woman on the right has four feet. I, I like surprise in my photographs. And I'm surprised as well when I get it. This is in Edinburgh as well. I've taken quite a lot of photographs in Edinburgh. Uh, and and the starting point is the arrows because uh, it's a wonderful shape, the circle. It's kind of half interesting on its own, but it needs somebody to wander into the photograph. And a few people did. And this man is almost carrying an arrow. So it's a kind of a tangent to the circle. He's almost the right person for the photo photograph. It, it, it could have been more extraordinary. Something else could have happened, but he, he's the right person. This is in Dublin. Uh, the owner of the dog had gone into the cafe and the dog was going berserk and getting animals or people flying is a great subject. Uh, I think this is a, it could be a, a, a ongoing theme is to get people flying and this dog is flying. I don't normally photograph the homeless. Uh, I really think it's a bit of a cliche and I don't really enjoy it. But sometimes, I mean, this is just crying out for a photograph, I think. Uh, he, he is a man with shoes. Uh, covered by the blankets, but it, I mean, he's asking to be photographed. I mean, it, the shoes under the blanket and the shoe shop, just, you know, I, I couldn't resist. 
this is a weird photograph. Uh, I like weird, I like odd. And this man in a market in East London, I, I guess he bought this mannequin head and was walking away with, with a head and looking very, very cross for some reason. I was trying to get the background to sort of fit. I couldn't get, I'm not sure what the right background would be, but it's just a weird photograph, uh, very odd. People do the strangest things. I mean, I would never walk around with a, with a mannequin head. I would put it in a plastic bag, uh, but he, he didn't seem too concerned. I call this one three legs. It's a couple on one of the bridges going over the River Thames in London. And the woman is, is kind of in front of him and he's hugging her and she's kind of disappearing into the photograph and the texture of the material. I mean, she's almost disappearing, but there's definitely three legs there. I mean, a very, very easy photograph to take. Uh, and from behind, a lot of my photographs are of people from behind. I find it easier. I'm not a full frontal engaging with people. This is another juxtaposition in Brighton, a uh, wonderful fiberglass dinosaur waiting for the right people to come into the photograph. And this elderly uh, two women came into it and they kind of fit. They, they, they seem not too concerned about the dinosaur because the dinosaur looks pretty real. Uh, and this is in, on Brighton Pier and, and, and the dinosaur was there for about six months and they took it down eventually because it was frightening the children. When it rains, uh, people do the oddest things. And, and this woman in Henley uh, was trying to keep dry, but she becomes something else. Uh, it's a very deliberate photograph. Uh, I could see her coming from the left and I was looking down and I took one shot between the first and the second chair. It, it could not be any other way. So very deliberate. This was in Scotland in a, in a children's kind of playground. I was fascinated by the, the, the sort of the, the bird sort of uh, ride thing for children, whatever it is. On its own, that would have been an interesting photograph, but this, this kid suddenly came into the picture, uh, looking a bit awkward, but mimicking the shape of, of the bird thing. I, I mean, th th this is luck. And his hand is almost like the feathers of, of, of the bird ride. And everything about it is awkward and interesting and not, it was completely random. I, I, I wasn't really going for this, but he, he came along and it's just, that's it. I took one photograph. This is in Italy. Just intriguing that there should be a teddy bear uh, trying to escape, it seems to me. Uh, it, very odd. It, it, I, I don't know what's happening, but it, it's, it, it's easy photograph to take, but you have to take it. London Zoo, feeding time. And the penguin is following the zookeeper around. But I think it's got a kind of elegance about it. It almost looks like some sort of catwalk. Uh, she looks like a bit like a model. Uh, and penguins are great to photograph. I mean, a much neglected subject, I think. And swans, the greatest subject in photography could well be swans, especially in black and white. Uh, this is taken in Norwich in 1991. 
looking down upon the river in Norwich. So you've got a kind of a dark black river and these wonderful white contrasty swans in line, absolutely perfect for photography. And the second swan at the top is not quite in sync with the rest, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so I can't resist this kind of thing. It's a very contrasty black and white photograph made for black and white. This, this is one of my favorite photographs. Uh, I, I find it very interesting with a lot of my photographs that my favorite photographs are not necessarily the favorite photographs of everybody else. So for everybody else, this is probably a, a kind of a low key photograph, but for me, it, I, it's one of my favorites uh, and I call it heaven. Sometimes I give my photographs titles and I thought heaven, it, it just seemed the right title. It, it deserved a title and it's in keeping with my taking photographs of the elderly. Uh, and it's also a very personal photograph because it was taken shortly after my father died and I went to a seaside resort called South End in Essex with my mother. And my mother is somewhere in the background of the photograph. Uh, so it's a very personal one. Uh, and I love the shape of the elderly. Uh, and it's got a kind of a heavenly light to it. So it's a very, it's, I, I suppose it's a quite an understated photograph, but it's one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites as well, which doesn't seem to register with a lot of people, uh, which, which, which I kind of enjoy, you know, sometimes photographs are for me. And it's uh, taken in London, looking down upon the River Thames, and it's just a seagull flying across the river after a boat's gone under a bridge. So the, 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 the swirl of the, the water looks like, to me, uh, uh, a range of mountains. I, I think this is, I mean, for me, photographs have to sort of uh, suggest something else. And this is an albatross flying across the Andes mountains in South America. Uh, but it's actually just a seagull flying across the River Thames. But I love the idea that it might be something else. And during my black and white days, there was a hint that I would become more abstract. And this, this is one of the few abstract photographs I took in black and white. It's taken with a long lens and it's very much uh, influenced, I think, by Mario Giacomelli, an Italian photographer who had quite an influence on me. I, I always saw his photographs were wonderful and, and it's uh, very contrasty. And the way it's printed or scanned suggests that the people are kind of floating. Uh, because of the, the contrast, it blasts out the detail of the floor. Uh, and I call this one the rush hour. And that past uh, black and white photography back to colour. Uh, this was taken, I think, in I don't know, 2016 or something. And it seemed quite a significant photograph to me because it was the first time that I'd achieved photographing absolutely nothing. Uh, th there's no clue to what this is. It is actually uh, looking through the canvas uh, surround of a market stall in Portobello Road in London but it, it could be anything, you, you don't know what it is. And I was very intrigued by this idea that you don't know what, what it is. So you can only go with your imagination. So this is a photograph of the industrial revolution in the 18th century before photography was invented. I mean, I really was very intrigued by this idea that you could photograph nothing. I mean, absolutely, completely nothing. It's a very hard thing to do. Reflections, I love reflections. And uh, this is in London. 
is the theatre land in London, and it's it's a kind of a face on the right. So th this is very much abstract. This is me interfering a little bit. It's taken on the top deck of a London bus. It's after a day wandering around London, not really taking any decent photographs. And it's a kind of a wet evening and it's the top deck of a bus. And I just looking down at the traffic and I'm experimenting and the handprint is mine. I just stick my hand there to see what would happen. And it kind of works, uh, I think. It's, it's an unusual photograph, but I am interfering a little bit in this photograph. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, I'm very interested in art and some of my blurred photographs, I like to think, relate to some uh, artists like this. This is uh, Francis Bacon kind of uh, photograph. I mean, I just this, this woman was was incredible. She looks very large, an odd shape. Uh, but surreal it, it's it's in uh, Charing Cross Road in London and there's a kind of a bespoke hotel there which has these wonderful curtains and behind the glass and it's very it's almost like a waves of the ocean I, I'm very intrigued by by the light and it's one of those places that I go back to quite a lot this is Bill Bayo in outside the Guggenheim Museum. And it's just a little girl with a wonderful red, you know, this amazing colorful umbrella. And this is typical of, of the way I, I kind of experiment. And I, I use a slow shutter speed and I'm shaking the camera at the same time to get this kind of blurry abstract effect. This, uh, talking about art, I went to Thailand a few times and the monks were interesting, but I was desperately always trying to avoid being a tourist. Uh, so the only way I could kind of connect with photographing monks or whatever was to do it in an abstract way. So th this for me is a kind of a watercolor photograph. Uh, the light is very bright. I wanted it bright. Uh, so it looks like a watercolour. This is also in Thailand. I, as I, I mentioned before, maybe I like taking photographs through things and dirty windows is, is one of my favourites. Uh, there's lots of walkways in, in Bangkok. And they have wonderful taxis there in all these sort of kind of bright, bold colors. So this, this is absolute photographic heaven for me. Uh, very easy to photograph and all these wonderful colors. So I did loads and loads of these kind of abstract uh, uh, photographs of taxis. And, and one of the intriguing things is there's never ever the correct color. You're never quite sure what it should look like. This is in Lisbon. Uh, it's somebody putting out their bed linen to, to dry, uh, looking up. And it could be, it could be a kind of a jellyfish or whatever. I mean, I'm another gift. I, I you know, did these surprising things to, uh, to photograph. I mean, continually I'm surprised, but by the things that you can photograph. I mean, it, it seems crazy to photograph somebody's uh, bed linen left out to dry, but actually it can make a very nice image. So I'm constantly surprised. This is more conventional, very deliberate. Uh, a man came out of a shop in London carrying bed mattresses. And that's sort of interesting 
that's half the photograph, but you've got to get the right background. So I followed him a little while and I was lucky. And, you know, it's the perfect background. Uh, I, I was lucky. <laughs> this, is a, this is an odd photograph. I'm often on trains uh, going into London and I'm inside obviously and so is this woman kind of sitting to my right and the reflection as you journey along on along you know you know into London you get all these interesting reflections so I'm looking out but every now and again because of the light and the background the woman to my right is suddenly in the picture uh, so she has no idea that I'm taking a photograph of her. Uh, but she looks as if she's floating. She's inside and outside. Uh, I, this is, I find this very interesting. I, I would like to do more of these photographs. Uh, but you, you have to get lucky. So it's very... I, I like photographs where you're not quite sure what's happening. So it's not clear exactly what is happening here. This is, this is a, a, a rare photograph in the, there's eye contact. I, I rarely have any uh, involvement with the people I photograph uh, and to get eye, con eye contact is very, very rare. But this, this guy in London was race, this businessman was racing around the corner and we just clocked each other for like two seconds and I took one photograph and it's just pretty weird, but uh, it's a gift as well. Now, the experimentation, uh, the, this continual need for experimentation, I, I, I've, I've finally got around to doing double exposures, which I find very interesting. Uh, the, the possibilities, I, I always thought it was a bit of a gimmick or a bit of a cliche but you get your, your, your first photograph. In this case, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a splintered window, which is a nice background texture, but what, what is the second picture that's kind of gonna make it? Uh, so the background to start with, and then you've got your background, then you go looking to what to put in the frame. So I got this mother and child walking along dead center. So this was a very interesting uh, development for me. And I've, I've taken quite a few of these. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by road markings, the speed limits, and I take one, which is the background, the, 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 and the 2020 becomes like the wheels of a bicycle. So it's, they're very uh, different. I, I feel a little bit guilty sometimes. It's sort of a, it's a kind of a cheating, uh, you know, it's not real it's not what you actually see but I've, I've got to the point where I think well why not let, let, let's see what just see what happens and I've, I've done a lot of these I, I sometimes they work sometimes they don't uh, so you this one you first start with 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 the word solo which might describe a person then you get the right person to to put with the with the the first track as it were the first image so experimentation this this is uh, a surprising photograph i mean i saw this man in london and i was absolutely intrigued by his neck i mean there's no other way of putting it uh, i've seen this a few times but i'm vaguely aware of the white line uh, but I'm not sure I absolutely saw it that the white line lines up with the with the white of his shirt. Uh, I would like to say that I was completely aware of it and it was very deliberate, but I'm, I'm not sure. I think I only really discovered this photograph after I took it, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, another kind of uh, sub genre I'm interested, if you like, in kind of fashion photography, if you can call it that, I don't know. I photographed a Japanese model quite a few times and she had a sort of a parasol 
with a with a hole in it and and that's the image i took i'm you know it's kind of abstract unconventional and strange uh and different and she she has a lot of kimonos i'm very interested in japanese culture uh, i've never been to japan but i would love to photograph there so anything in that kind of fashion area of kimonos i'm very interested in so it's a it's a sort of a, I, I don't think you call it fashion photography exactly but perhaps in another life i would be a fashion photographer really i i you know i i think i, I should have done something else <laughs> David, we only have about nine minutes. So just to let you know if you want to show okay. any more pictures and then we'll move on to questions. Okay, I'll, I'll zip through. I'll, I'll zip through. I'll, I, I would single out this, this picture uh, because it's a double take. I think you, I'm, I'm not, as I said, I'm not always completely aware when I take photographs, but when I looked at this later, I thought, ah, oh, wow the skin tones of the two of the couple they are one uh that was a, a surprise i like red somebody described this as a strawberry strawberry on a stick on a green stem children children do the strangest things he's just putting on a coat but Adults don't put on a coat like that. You know, the imagination of a child is something else. Uh, he's, he's going down a dark cave or a tunnel. And I just stood there watching him take, put this coat on and play. I mean, and, and the, the essential word is play. Uh, maybe it's a kind of a metaphor for street photography. You always have to play. This is... Uh, I'm always interested in interesting characters and people who have elegance or are a bit different. And this is taken at the British Museum. And this man with the hat, he looked like an archaeologist from the 1930s. And I should add that some of my photographs get used for book covers. There, there is a kind of a narrative going on with some of my photographs sometimes which I don't completely uh, expect. So this ended up, I'm very pleased to say, as a cover for a John Grisham uh, book cover, which, which, which was wonderful. You, you never know that this man's gonna end up on the, you know, as a John Grisham cover. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with th this sequence of photographs, uh, because a lot of these photographs are not just one photograph, they are a sequence. And I would hesitate to say that, that this is my best photograph, uh, but it is a candidate maybe, uh, because the, the gods looked down upon me this day when I got this photograph. And I can emphasize this hopefully by showing the absolute mess of the other versions where the other ones are just nothing. You know, it's all a complete mess, but you, you have to kind of, uh, be patient or hopeful and think that somehow it's all gonna to come together. To have this group of people all doing the right thing is very, very rare. And it did remarkably come together in, in the final one. And that's it, there you go. <laughs> Beautiful work, David, thank you. Oh, okay, well. Um, so we have five minutes, so we'll ask some questions, just uh, looking at the chat. Um, so David, why don't you uh, unshare your screen so we can see everybody. Um, okay. Uh, Ian uh, asks, uh, what are your thoughts on cropping when doing street work, street photography? I, I, I generally don't crop. 99% I don't crop. Yeah, I'm, gotcha. I'm a kind of full frame person. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I don't like to crop. I, it, it feels kind of wrong. Okay. Um, another question is, did you ever try painting? No. <laughs> Only as a child. 
No. I just don't think I'm very good at painting. So that's, I wish I could, but I, I, I suspect that I can't. Well, your photographs are very good at painting at least. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Um, in many of these photos, it seems like you're shooting from above. Do yes. you, do you, how do you go about doing that or, or what do you plan? I, I'm, I, I find it an easier thing to do. I mean, I'm, I'm, to shoot from above seems uh, easier. You know, you have more control. So you oh, look, yeah. it's a definite habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look for places that are a little raised above yeah. where you're thinking like you're going to shoot. I like to look down. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like to be seen. I I, I pre prefer to observe. Gotcha. And um, are your double exposures in camera or are you doing those in post? They're in camera. Gotcha. And do you okay. find that an extra challenge, the layering? Yeah, I, I think in camera is the way to do it. I think it's the, the kind of ethical way to do it. I, I, don't, I don't think you should do it afterwards. I, th I think it should be done quite quickly in the camera. Either it works or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Julia, do you have any questions for David? Uh, yes, well, I, I just want to say to you, um, um, a, a humble photographer tells you that he is lucky uh, to get a shot, but um, in his case, he was ready and prepared and he's quick. <laughs> so luck does have something to do with it because you get lucky that you came upon that scene or you get lucky that the the photo gods are looking down at you, but you've got to be ready. And, and, and so every time he said he was lucky, it was because he is a prepared, talented street photographer. <laughs> Just to believe, that. You've got to believe that you're going to be lucky. What's that? You've got to believe that you're going to be lucky. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> And one last question, um, asking a technical question about your lens. Uh, if you don't like to be seen, do you use a, a zoom lens or what, what, what is your lens? I use a standard. I mean, the, the camera I've used for the last five years or something, it's got 35 mil. No, I, I, I rarely use a long lens, usually a standard lens. I'm very conventional in that sense, yeah. Gotcha. And do you have any advice for uh, Street photographers just starting out. Don't Any be thoughts? obsessed. Don't be obsessed by by your own photography. Look at the work of others. <laughs> be inspired. <laughs> I mean, uh, it sounds a bit of a obvious thing, but I I, I think you know you, you have to be uh, you have to look up. You have to be inspired by other people. I think. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a constant. Great, that's great advice, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your work today. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Excellent, love right. it. Thank you so much. Thank right. you, you did a great job. Hang around for the next one.